Hey guys, it's Steph from DebtFreeSpending.com and we are here for our another night of our 35 days to an organized time challenge and today I actually had kind of a rough day. It was a funeral for a relative and so I thought what an appropriate day to do a video on how to organize your time. And we have such short amount of time on this earth that I think it really is a valid point that we could give you some great tips on how to manage your time and help, help you live a happier life, which I think is really the answer to what we all want to do with our time. But some of these time management tips we're going to teach you will make your life happier and run more smoothly. So I'm going to run down our quick list of tips and all the things that we think you, that might help you in your own time organization that we use and practice frequently that have really helped our family you know, have a lot more peace and a lot more time to spend together as a family. So the first thing on my list is I think to maintain the organizing systems that you already have in place, taking a little bit of time to do that every day, which we discussed last night at length um, in our video, why you should maintain your organizing systems because you, you know, if you don't, then those systems fall apart and you don't stay organized and that's half the battle of being organized. So I'm not gonna touch on that a whole lot, just going back to making sure that you're maintaining your systems every day is one of the most important things that you can do to ensure that all those things keep rolling smoothly, whether it's you're paying your bills, organizing your receipts, keeping your kitchen, your bathroom clean, picking up, doing laundry, you know, staying active. And believe it or not, I used to think, yeah, well, so I get that all done, I won't have any time left to do anything. That is not true. The more organized I've become, it gives me actually more free time to do the things that I want to do, which I really can't believe that in a way, but it's, it's very true. Since I've been doing these organizing systems and putting them into place in the evenings, there have actually been some times where I'm like, what are we going to do with our time now? <laughs> because we're not busy cleaning up after ourselves the way we normally would because we're putting things away on a regular basis and so we're not having to spend so much time cleaning up. So that's the first thing is to maintain your organizing system. The second thing is make a list of all the things that you do in a day and keep a time log for a week. You would be amazed at seeing how much time you get stuff or how much what I like to call time sucks happen. Like I, I have time sucks every day and so time sucks are things that suck your time. They're things that aren't worthwhile that you waste your time doing that maybe at that point you weren't multitasking or maybe uh, you have a person that's a time suck and we're going to talk about that in a few steps as well. But keeping a weekly time log of where you spent your time will help you determine if <clears throat> the things you're doing are valuable with your time. And so the one thing that I want to really stress in today's video is that relationships really are the most important thing in your life. We're only on this earth for maybe a good 80 to 100 years. And during that time, I think the most important thing that I've kept at the forefront is that my relationships with my family and my friends are the most important things to me. And so I really try to honor those with balance. And that was my other key point is that some people in your mar in your family and you know, and once you get married and you have a, a family going, there are some people in your life who might be time sucks and you gotta be really careful of that. And you don't want to waste time on relationships that are just maybe not as uh, not bringing anything to you, and maybe they they drag actually drag you down. And so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So, anyways, but getting back to um, making a list of all the things you do and keeping a weekly time log will really help you see where you're spending your time. And this can be done simply in a notebook. You don't have to have something fancy for it. Just write down in a notebook each day. You know, at the top of the page Monday, and write down what you did all that day and all the things that you're doing and look at, analyze your, your, your tasks and d determine, is there any better way I could be doing these? Any faster ways? Could I, be, could I be putting the laundry in while I'm, and running the dishwasher and then sitting down to fold the laundry so that I get some other things rolling instead of doing them one by one by one. So multitasking is definitely something that you wanna build into your time organization. Like I said, putting, you know, anytime you can get one thing started that can be working while you're working, you're making time work for you. And so that's another really um, valid point. Another thing I had talked about before um, in the kitchen and the bathroom cleaning video is to use a stopwatch. Time yourself when you're cleaning, just to try and, you know, keep yourself moving along. And one thing that I've done is I've put a small, tiny digital clock in my bathroom. That is one of the biggest time sucks for me in the bathroom. I go in there and it's like a black hole of time. <laughs> I come out and I'm like, I was in there for a half hour, what do you mean? You know, and so having that little clock in the bathroom has drastically changed my lifestyle and how fast I move through my morning routine because I know 
I have to get my son to the bus stop in the next 20 minutes or the next 30 minutes so I have this much time left. So use that stopwatch to keep track of your time. So another thing is that um, I was going to tell you is try to estimate how long certain projects are going to take you. One thing I use is my iPad. I'm able to keep my monthly calendar on here, my weekly calendar, my daily to-do list, and I actually really only use a monthly calendar and then my daily to-do list. So I look over my monthly calendar and say, okay, what do I have going on today? that I specifically need to remember and then my to-do list each day comes out of my ca my monthly calendar. So that was my other tip is make sure that you're using at least a monthly calendar. You have to have a monthly calendar. And I, but for us that includes everything from haircuts to our son's picture day to uh, you know a PTA night. I mean all of his activities are on there. All of our activities, birthday parties for friends and family, weddings, things that come up. You know, all of those things need to be kept on your monthly calendar. And so you really, really, really have to have a monthly calendar. I'm going to just stress that. I'm a teacher. I can say that. <laughs> Get a monthly calendar. And then your daily to-do list can be anything from something formal in a binder. You can use technology like I do. My Even my phone, if you have an iProduct or certain Android products, you can actually do your to-do list from, from there as well. And, you know, I even keep my grocery list on my, on my iPad and my iPhone, and they sync together. But if you don't have that technology, then just use a notebook. That's why for years that was all I used was just a notebook with your daily you know, to-do list of all the things that you have to do that day. And then the other thing is when you're doing your to-do list, you need to prioritize when those projects are due. So for example, uh, my sister's daughter's birthday was in two weeks. And uh, I know that we have uh, Easter coming up in two months. So I'm obviously uh, going to do the craft project for my niece's birthday because that's in two weeks before I'm going to do the project that's two months from now, which is Easter and stuffing all the candy and the Easter eggs. So prioritizing by when things are due, you don't get caught up in that, oh yeah, I got to do this. And you sit right down and you do this project. Oh yeah, I got to do this too. And you're, you're just putting out fires all the time. This is a more organized way to determine what should really come next. So I'm going to keep moving here. <laughs> Sorry. The next tip is don't be afraid to say no. Turn off your Facebook chat. Turn off your cell phone. Don't check your emails. Shut the kids out. Tell hubby or somebody else to watch the kids if you can. Get that time for yourself that you need to do the things that you need to get done. And that may include saying no. It may mean, like I said, turning off technology. Um, and, and also saying no to those time stuff people and say, no, I, I, I don't have time to meet with you this weekend. Saying no is something I think in our culture, women especially feel badly about but it's not something that I feel badly about because I know that number one priority needs to be me and my family. And so as long as the priority still holds true that it's for me and my family and my relationships, then I really try to, you know, make sure that if I have to say no to somebody else, oh well. I mean, I feel guilty to a point, but I, I don't let it consume me like I think a lot of women do in our culture because I think a lot of women are pleasers. So you got to be really careful with that. I mean, I have for years have been a pleaser and have had to learn to work through that. And I'm in my late 30s. <laughs> so as you work through some of those feelings, you'll learn that, that as you get older, the priorities do change and the people that are important change. So that goes back to, again, my next step, my next tip, which is make sure you're scheduling time to have fun. Don't become so consumed by your to-do list that you don't have time to spend with your kids or your spouse or just relaxing as a family, you know, doing something fun together, making sure you're scheduling time for family time. Like our family has to schedule time for prayer, family devotions when we want to, you know, read the Bible together as a family or do something like that together. We actually a lot of times have to schedule that. You need to schedule time with your spouse and a date night or time together just to be alone, just to talk or rekindle that romance a little bit. So scheduling those important things in your relationships are one of the most important time management tips that I can teach you that I think are really worthwhile. And so the other thing is leave room for margin. Make sure that you're, you know, leaving enough room for the unexpected to come up. You know, like I said, there are things that happen. I had a relative pass away recently. We had some things we had to do. We wanted to go say goodbye a night and we wanted to go, uh, we helped take care of some cousin's children one or two evenings, you know, and so we did that because we love those people. And while it did change our schedule, we had to be open to allowing that because that relationship is really a priority for us. So I hope that, you know, Main, again, going back and recapping, maintaining your systems, you know, um, keeping a calendar, 
keeping a time log for a week just to see where your time goes, avoiding time sucks, saying no, um, you know, scheduling time for fun, keeping margin, all those things are really important in managing your time and hopefully will help you become a better time organizer. So hopefully you guys got something out of tonight. Comment if you did. We really want to hear from you. So I hope you guys have a great evening.